Hey everyone, welcome to the support show. Today I'm going to show you how to test your limit switches and accessories in newer builds of Carbide Motion. At the time of making this video, we're currently on build 618. You can find download links to Carbide Motion in the description below. If you need some help getting through the setup wizard, Kevin has a great video guide for this already and you can also find the link to that video in the description below. To thoroughly troubleshoot your limit switches, bit setter, or bit zero, we'll need to see what the machine is seeing. To do so, let's power the machine on, connect to Carbide Motion, and open the Settings tab in the top right corner. Here, you'll see three tabs, Options, Maintenance, and Debug. But for now, we're only really concerned with Debug. On the left, you'll see your machine type and gerbil version. On the right, you'll see your input pin state. These are indicators that will light up when a limit switch or a probe is triggered. Below, you'll see a long list of internal machine settings. You can send us a copy by clicking copy to clipboard and pasting your settings log into your email reply. Let's start by testing our limit switches. To test each switch, we'll place a piece of metal up to the target on the switch. We should then see a red LED illuminate on the switch itself and a little dot light up next to the indicator on the debug menu. We can then test each switch and both probes in the same manner. Also, for my Shipoko 5 users, don't forget that you do have a Y2 limit switch as well on the back left side of the machine. Now, when testing your bit setter, go ahead and press down on the plunger with your finger and look for that little dot to appear next to probe slash bit setter under the input pin state. I'll show you on the Snowmad 3. I press down on the bit setter probe and I should see that pin pop up and go off as I depress. Same thing applies to your bit zero. Touch the ground magnet to the body of the bit zero so it turns that LED from green to red and look for that same probe bit setter signal. On to the VFD and the bit runner. In order to test the bit runner and VFD, we'll need to send some commands directly to the controller to see if they respond correctly. To do this, we'll need to enable the MDI under the options tab of the settings window. We can go ahead and click the checkbox to enable MDI. Once checked, we will click OK in the bottom right hand corner. Now we should see MDI pop up right in the top menu bar next to Run and Settings. Once enabled, go ahead and click on MDI. We will then type in M3S10000, M3S10000. Once you click Send, you should then hear the spindle power up to about 10,000 RPM. And then we should also see that display on the VFD go to about approximately 10,000 RPM as well. We can then type in M5 and click send to power off the VFD. Now, testing your bit runner is much more of the same. You can go into MDI, you will want to type in M3S10,000, click send. Once you click send, it should power your router on. You should hear a click in the bit runner itself. You can then type in M5, click send again. You should hear another audible click and then the router should power itself off. Last but not least, virtual homing. Sometimes we may need to sneak around that pesky homing sequence to finish a project or for some troubleshooting. And we can with a couple easy steps. First, let's go ahead and click on settings. Let's disable the bit setter. And let's also go ahead and restart carbide motion. Once restarted, we can connect to the cutter, we'll click on MDI, we'll click on this empty text field and type in G28.3. No slashes, no capitalization, does not matter. Once we click send, you'll see a busy box pop up and then you will have the option to jog appear next to run and MDI. And that's pretty much it. Your machine has quote unquote initialized at this point. You can jog things around and you can see how this could be super helpful for troubleshooting. You can turn the machine off, change a motor connection, turn it back on, virtually home, jog things around, and get a lot of information this way. As helpful as it is, it's important to know that when we enter in that command, wherever the cutter is sitting at that time, it considers itself the home position. That means it thinks it's in the back right corner which only allows us to jog into the negative direction on each axis. So if you have to run a job this way, which please just don't, uh, set new work zeros and proceed with absolute caution. Maybe run an air job. Maybe use a piece of MDF and do a practice run. Please save your cherished hardwood. Anyways, if you can't make heads or tails of your homing errors, go ahead and send us an email or give us a call. We'll be happy to give you a hand. 
Until then, have fun making chips, and we'll catch you later.